Hi there, folks. Welcome back to the WP Tonic Show, our Wednesday interview specials. Um, this is show 200 and 240. I, I stumbled there, folks, a little bit. Um, we've got a great guest back on the show, um, great company. Um, we've got Justin Boozer back on the show. Would you like to do a quick introduction, Justin? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Um, Justin, one of the co-founders of Beaver Builder and the uh, lead developer, and uh, our parent company is Fastline Media. Uh, that makes Beaver Builder. <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks so much for agreeing to come back on the show, Justin. It's much appreciated. Great sure. company. Uh, I was giving them great praise before we came on the show, folks, and I, I actually meant it. Um, so. What is Beaver Builder up to at the present moment, Justin? You know, you, uh, you've been unleashed to join the interview. You've been unleashed from the coding cave that you've been hiding. <laughs> you know, you can see daylight for once. For um, But what you've been up to, what's the plans at the present moment? Yeah, um, our, our big focus <clears throat> seems like a lot of the year, really, which has been a shift from previous years. Um, has been the first part of the year was Beaver Themer and then transitioning into kind of trying to wrap up 2.0 the second half of the year which is 2.0 encompasses a lot of feedback that we've gotten um, over the last couple of years. Beaver Builder in next um, I think April will actually be four years old which is crazy right yeah I'm yeah I'm just I keep having to double check that I can't believe we've actually been doing it this long. So 2.0 was really a lot of the stuff we've learned, you know, the previous like three years um, and feedback we've gotten. And um, when we were working on that, it was, you know, we probably, Brent and I and the team have been, you know, because Brent, Brent led it. If you haven't met Brent, he's great. Um, but we've been talking about that for a long time, like oh, way over a year and working on it too. And originally we went out in way out in left field and it didn't even look like beaver builder. And then we came back and kind of met somewhere in the middle. So it still kind of got the classic beaver builder feel, but incorporates a lot of the feedback that we've gotten over the years, just on, you know, the, the user interface really not like any like kind of new whiz bang features. Although there are some cool things in there too. Um, so yeah, right now that's, that's our focus. Um, and that should start rolling out um, next week um, ish. And then after that, kind of to your point, to your question of what we're up to, because that has been our focus is such a, such a big focus. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to, I think we're going to start, you know, taking a look at our roadmap internally because we've been so focused on those two big projects that um, we haven't been looking at some of the more specific feedback items. And so having a great support team like we have, um, you know, probably, or just a team in general, really, um, but the support team specifically can really help us identify certain things that are coming through, um, through support, uh, you know, like feature requests or, you know, pain points for users and things like that. And so we'll be taking a look at that as a team. Um, you know, it's not just going to be me, Justin saying I'm the lead developer and I think that these are the things we should do. We're really going to look at it from a customer centric approach and take in and see what kind of problems we can solve. Um, so I don't have any specific things, um, necessarily right now, just because we've, like I said, we need to kind of like do our homework on that, but we do, we have been working on an internal roadmap. So any of our customers listening, we, we, we had a Trello board with a roadmap for a while. And then when we got busy with these other big projects, mm -hmm. we kind of, um, we, we stopped updating that because I didn't want to make promises or put things down there that, you know, weren't going to get done because we're working on these other things, but we have been keeping an internal roadmap based on um, feature requests and client uh, and customer feedback. And we've been doing internal voting and internal like tagging of like, you know, how popular is this, you know, based on um, requests and feedback and all that. So we have all that data. Um, we just kind of like need to materialize what, what's going to come to the top. I mean, there's, there's not enough people and not enough hours in the day to do everything, unfortunately. So, um, so yeah, we're going to do that. And then in terms of the products too, um, I think, you know, our first focus will be themer um, because we launched themer and then we kind of just, we've, it, we've done a couple minor updates, but I think we need to come circle back to some of the bigger 
requests um, that come through with that and integrations and stuff like that. And uh, what I'm excited about for next year too is um, starting to look at the the actual Beaver Builder theme again, um, which I think will some of our customers will be happy to hear that because uh, you know I hear some complaints that that's taking a back seat, um, which it has over the last year. But also I think people forget that again Beaver Builder is going to be four years old. And Beaver Builder theme was like first like two three years was worked on quite a bit, so it's a it's a pretty mature theme. Um, in terms of you know just stability and feature set, but um, yeah, I'd love to come back, circle back around to that, and then take a look at the feature requests and see what we can do. So, going to be a lot of fun stuff coming up, just between themer, the theme, and the builder itself. And um, I'm excited to see what we can do. Well, you know, to take on two major um, projects in one year is pretty ambitious in its own right yeah. really is it most yeah. software companies of your size would uh, just take it on one major project <laughs> year would be um uh would be the norm would it uh but you're quick movers at beaver builder um the other thing is it's it's really must be quite in some ways hard to plan anything out because this is a fast moving area isn't it yeah yeah it is um but i think one thing that we found that works is you know kind of being able to just moving at our own pace and focusing on customer it it could be you're right it's a fast moving area not just for builders but just for you know themes in general um and, and wordpress plugins and um it, it could be it could be easy to get caught up in the features arm race where you're trying to do everything do all the things um, instead, I think we just, you know, try and work at our own pace, make sure that we're pushing out quality updates and really focusing on, you know, the most important things that we can for our users. Yeah. With update two, are there a couple of things that you are really very enthusiastic about and, um, would like to point out? Are there a couple sure. of things that you would like to point out? Yeah, definitely. I think overall, um, the speed improvements are some of my favorite and the, we, we actually have some like what you would call perceived speed where like we actually didn't speed anything up, but the, the user experience is better. So it's quicker to get to things. And then we actually have like literal like loading speed improvements. Um, so for the perceived speed improvements, um, things are just organized better. I think um, from a UX standpoint to, to you actually like, navigating between like okay rows and templates and all those kind of things is really quick now to navigate between all that different kind of content that you want to work with and then the um so that's perceived speed and then the uh, the actual like speed improvements um in, in terms of the technical side uh we rewrote the the built a lot of the builder ui um in javascript so instead of having to go to the server to render stuff um, it all just renders like instantly um, on the page. And so I think um, those improvements are some of my favorite just from a, a usability standpoint. And then we did some fun stuff with the settings panels too. Like now you can resize them, you can pin them um, to the, whatever side you want. And it, it, it's, it's like a user uh, memory feature, I think is a term I've heard recently. Uh, basically, you know, if I log in to, you know, my com account on my computer and my Photoshop is set up in the workspace that I like it, but if, you know, someone else logged into that same computer and onto their account, it would be set up in a workspace um, configuration that they like. So being, getting into this, kind of exploring this area of like, instead of Beaver Builder just being like a fixed UI that you can actually customize the UI to how you like to work. Um, so there's some of that in there too. And I think I think there's probably more we could do too. Uh, nothing. I don't have anything specific. I just, I know that, you know, I mean, everybody, whatever application you're using, people like to set them up in the way that they like to work. So that's some, <clears throat> that, those are, that's one of the ones that um, I'm really excited about as well. Oh, that's great. Um, with FEMA, it's almost like you threw a hand grenade into um, the world of WordPress, really. Um, you know, what, is a theme what isn't a theme what's the relationship between page builders and themes right um was you expecting such uh, a response to that product and has it turned out the way that you and your team were hoping for 
um, I wasn't sure about the response. And I mean, I even had my doubts, like, you know, halfway through it. I, one of the biggest doubts what I thought was, oh man, this is going to be too complicated. No one's going to want to use it. Um, so the response has definitely been awesome. Um, but it, again, it was all built a bit, a lot of, most, all of that is themers was, you know, years of customer feedback saying, can I do this with Beaver Builder? And, you know, we kind of realized that, you know, these are some bigger concepts that are just more than just a page builder. Um, you're, you know, you're that, like you're saying, you, at that point, you're talking more about like on the theme level. And so we kind of identified that, but the response has been amazing. Um, you know, like just from developers that love what they can do to it to people that don't know code. Uh, there's one of our longtime customers who's telling me he feels like he can do anything in WordPress now because with a uh, plugin like advanced custom fields or pods, they're, you know, creating these, uh, you know, these more technical like, uh, you know, setups where you can enter data and then they're actually be able to build layouts with that data using Themer and without having to touch a line of code. So that's, um, that's awesome to see like some of the cool, um, cool solutions that people are building um, with those kind of setups. Well, it's also around rapid development, isn't it? Uh, you know, it, there was a, ne a necessity for the kind of tools that you're producing because the requirements clients were asking for and the rapid development times they were asking for, um, the traditional mythologies just weren't coping, were they? Yeah, I mean, it really goes back to why we created Beaver Builder itself. Uh, we we were using it as an agency, and I remember uh, Robbie, Billy, and I used to share an office back then. And you know, we'd like when we were you know first like here for like six months or whatever, we we're using it. We'd always like look over to each other and be like, "Man, this is so awesome! How fast this is now!" And a lot of it comes down to two basic things. Like I've even seen other people say, you know, like oh, I just use it to lay out my grids, and then I put you know, custom HTML in the, the columns. Um, and, and I agree as, you know, developer, like even just being able to lay out a grid structure rapidly uh, rather than having to hand code that same stuff over and over and over again, uh, just it's so much quicker. So yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely a themer kind of builds on that rapid development, um, getting things done quick. Um, and, before, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, um, no, no, go for it. Yeah, uh, before we go for our break, um, so how you know you're going to refocus on FEMA? What are are there some? Can you um, give us some idea of some of the things you would like to improve on FEMA? Have you got any major ideas when you get when you refocus on that? Sure, sure. Um, there's a couple of things. One of the bigger ones I've seen that kind of hangs people up. And hopefully I can explain this in a way that doesn't sound confusing, but if you use themer to build a, a layout for your posts, for example, and all you have to do is build that one layout in themer and then it applies to all your posts. And, you know, same if you had, you know, built the, the file in your theme and that applies to all your posts. Um, you only have to build the one, but what people, some people have been wanting to do, and this has come up more often than I thought it would is that they then want to be able to actually use the page builder on some of those posts. Um, so it almost kind of sounds like inception because you have a page builder layout that's themers using to actually create the entire post, but then they want to go through and on those specific posts, customize them further with the page builder. Um, it, you can't do that now. I, I, it's a tricky technical problem to try and solve, but I'd like to look into that because I understand where people are coming from when they want to build like one template for, or maybe just for their pages, right? They want to build one template for their pages or a custom post type or whatever, and then be able to go in there and actually edit the content, the area of the content with, uh, with the builder. So that's one. Um, I'd like to see more, um, I'd like to do more work on the, the field connection stuff um, where you, you're, you're actually hooking up data. Um, we get a lot of requests for, you know, oh, can I hook this up or can I hook that up? Um, you know, the, the post modified date, for example, we didn't have that, so we added it. Um, I'd like to see if there's a way that we can make that easier. So instead of, you know, us having to continually surface these things, that there's a way for people just to surface stuff, you know, like that's in just in post meta tables and maybe an array or, or, or whatever. Um, and then um, we have, we do have some integrations that are in alpha right now, uh, events calendar and EDD. Oh, um, sweet. 
Sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really cool what you can do, um, especially with events calendar, because um, that plugin is just so powerful. Um, not not that EDD isn't, and I'd like to look into maybe like you know like a, a membership plugin and maybe an LMS plugin. I'm not too sure how many like different integrations will go down. I mean, at some point, it gets really niche and specific. So I think I might actually do like a tutorial series on. Uh, creating custom integrations for Themer because it's if if you're already building custom modules and, and templates and things like that, it's not it's not that difficult. So yeah, but to, know, we get, to finish off though, um, before we go for a break, is that Lee Jackson um, um, that also comes on our, um, our round table show on Fridays, and you've been on his podcast, I think. Haven't <laughs> Um, he's a great um, lover of your product and and module and modulizing it and building modules. That's been one of its great strengths, isn't it? Is that developers can extend it and build modules, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's good for us for support uh, in our support um, uh, <clears throat> request too, because rather than having maybe we get like feature requests and we're not sure if that's something we want to implement, but we can use our own. APIs and things that we built and just give people snippets and say, Oh, well, if you know, if you, we're not sure if that's a feature that should make it into the product, but if you just use this little snippet, you know, you can make it work for you. So it works. It works for us really well uh, too. Oh, that's great. We're going to go for our break. We're going to come back. Um, we're going to delve some more into Beaver Builder. Thanks, Justin. Be back in a second. We're coming back, folks. <clears throat> We've had a great conversation. Well, I've enjoyed it. I hope you trust it as. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, but I think you have, haven't you? Um, let's, let's get on to the kind of elephant in the room, but not quite. You've been, you've been pretty open. Um, um, and I always pronounce it. I, I think it's a mental thing, actually, Justin. Gutenberg, Gettysburg, Gutenberg. Um, um, <laughs> Was you surprised when um, it was announced, when Matt announced it, or um, was you thinking this was going to happen, or was it a bit of a surprise to you and your team? Yeah, I think, it, yeah, it was a surprise. We, I mean, I'd, if you had asked me before that, um, that state of the word at WordCamp US when he announced it, if this is something they were going to do, I would have said, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Um, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely didn't have any foresight there. It was a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> um, on reflection, why do you think it was a surprise? Um, I never, I guess I, I never thought like WordPress core would actually go down the builder experience um, route. <clears throat> you know, I thought that was maybe a little too much for, for WordPress core because they like to keep things like relatively simple. Mm -hmm. um, typically. So that's probably why I would have, wouldn't have guessed at the time. Um, my only comment about that is um, I've, I wasn't that surprised, actually, um, the, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's, you know, they had been, you know, WordPress.com um, Automatic is a privately held company and it's invested, it's um, seeked out external investment partners that have, uh, which have heavily invested in Automatic and um, obviously, it's not public, the different sources of income, but I would imagine that WordPress.com is of some significance to Automatic. <laughs> um, um, and, you know, with Squarespace, with Wix, with um, they just had much better um, online editing experiences than um, WordPress.com. So to, to keep competitive in that sector um the necessity to build an editor um you know that is one of the main drivers i would imagine do you, do you think i'm talking nonsense justin or do you think that probably was a leading reason yeah i mean it, you you hear that coming up in conversation all the time um surrounding this stuff too that it's more of a wordpress.com need than a wordpress.org need and I totally agree. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that are doing the, the, the dot or I mean, I don't know the numbers, so I can't say, oh, it's everybody or a lot of the people. Maybe it's a small fraction of the people, but it seems like 
for the you know the self-hosted WordPress space, you got a lot of people that are building websites for other people. Whereas a WordPress.com is more, I'm coming there to build my website like you would with a Wix or a Squarespace. So definitely, it does. I, I can agree. I mean, at the same token too. I mean, making WordPress easier for everyone is better for everyone. Um, I mean, more users on WordPress is better for all of us. So if they want to make all of WordPress better and easier to use, then I think that's that's a good thing too. You, you know, if it trickles down from .com to .org. The um, going by one of our great Friday panelists, Morton from Linda dot com or LinkedIn learning as i should say yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um he's been very vocal uh, about the project and also what the end point of this and i do agree with him i think matt's overall plan is something even more revolutionary than an editor it's fundamentally changing the construct of what pages post are into more of a thing about views um, mm-hmm. I was at the last San Francisco um, um, word camp before um, it was announced that they were going to move events around the country. And I remember that Matt did a, a very detailed um, presentation there where, he, on reflection, he gave some quite strong clues about what he, where he was taking it. And funny, Morton and myself were both there. Um, do you think that's probably right, that the overall um, plan is something even bigger than um, a, a page layout editor? Yeah, that's what it sounds like from what they've been talking about. And it sounds like we're going to see that pretty soon uh, when it, once it gets into the customizer uh, kind of stuff. It even sounds like it could be on a level of like what some, some of the stuff that Themer does. And I'm, I'm not sure how it all ties in together. Um, it should be interesting to see. I think if they really want to go into that direction, they are going to start having to think more about layout rather than just, you know, the, the current Gutenberg they've said they're not going to focus on layout right now. And I understand that as a, a you know, first version, but they're at some point, if they want to get beyond just posts and pages, they're going to have to think um, more in terms of like grid structures and things like that. Um, which they've been saying is going to be in the customizer focus and in, in the customizer focus is supposed to be next. So uh, that's why I'm saying we'll probably start to see what that might look like soon because right now it's just been a lot of talking and we haven't, you know, I haven't even seen the whole, I, I've seen some, a little bit of mock-ups here and there, but nothing that I can, I can actually visualize. Oh, okay. This is the direction they're trying to go. in. So, but I think it, it'll probably be pretty soon because Gutenberg is moving really fast uh, in, you know, I mean, I know people are afraid about it being ready too soon. I mean, I definitely don't think they should rush it, but it's, it's definitely getting closer. Well, it's a very difficult situation because you don't want, you don't want to come across as being a negative person just for the sake of being negative, do you? Um, And obviously things got to change. Um, we're, mm-hmm. we're in the world of the web, you know, it changes almost every year, every month, something comes up, doesn't it? It just goes with the territory. But on the other hand, um, you don't want it to be rushed because it does, it is a, a surprisingly large step, isn't it? Yeah. And I mean, the, you know, the, the one of WordPress's, you know, core, you know, pillars that, has propped it up all these years is the backwards compatibility um, argument, which I mean, I understand at some point, and I know that, you know, now there's a gray area with backwards compatibility. Um, at some, at some point, if you're going to move things forward, you can't always be thinking about backwards compatibility, but at the same time too, you don't want to break 25% of the web when you push out an update either. And you have, you have, uh, you know, different client expectations and, you know, custom solutions that were built for enterprise and, uh, it's, yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation to have to juggle. And, you know, I, I, I do have to say, I, mean, I, I, I applaud the core team because they're doing like really great work and, and, and they're staying motivated when there's like all this negativity. And like you're saying, there's a lot of people that are being negative just to be negative. It seems like rather than maybe providing some constructive feedback. So, um, 
I know that that I, I would have to find a hard time uh, <laughs> staying motivated in that climate where where you're like, guys, we're doing this really awesome stuff, but you know, half the people are just being saying you suck, <laughs> you know. So, well, so, you know, they are, you know, obviously Morton. Um, I wouldn't classify him as um, being negative just for being negative. Oh no, definitely not him. Um, no. <laughs> I think there's been some very. Um, it's, it's a struggle to find the right word in, isn't it, Justin? Not negative, but um, people saying, well, you really should think about this bit. You should look at this bit. You should look at that. And then you get people on the forums leaving very benign yeah. comments that any reasonable person just has to block out because right. it's just not providing any kind of realistic reason for their view. Um so you can't really listen to that because they're not giving you, um, they're not treating the thing as responsibly, really, are they? A, re- a responsible person gives reasons why they they feel this way. And they might be right and they might be wrong, but if they're placing reasonable questions, you should look at them and then give them some answers, shouldn't you, if you disagree, shouldn't you? Um that was very English, wasn't it, Justin? Uh, <laughs> that was very, very reasonable, wasn't it? Uh, we're all very reasonable, aren't we? Uh, um, so let's get to nitty gritty. It's you know, as a page builder, it's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, how do you see the future be for builder, or are you planning your next world beating solution already? <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> I think yeah, you, know, uh, you seem very calm and very relaxed. Um, so, um, so, but seriously, uh, before we wrap up the, the podcast part of the show, what do you see the future of Beaver Builder? We're gonna we're gonna move the Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> not... <laughs> uh, done with WordPress. No, I'm just kidding. I think. Uh, I, th- I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's still too early to tell really yeah. where this is going to go for themes, for visual builders, for a lot of different things. So um, there's time to to figure these things out. I think that Beaver Builder and even other page builders, you know, our, our competition are are really more like design applications than than you know than just a a, a content builder you know like you're, you're talking i mean some of you know like um divi for example they put a lot more into divi than i want to put into my builder um but you know divi is like getting close to being like a rival to photoshop in a way you know it's uh <laughs> it's pretty crazy the amount of features they're putting in those things um but you know i mean that's that's what people that's what not i shouldn't say people is in all people i should say that's what people that are building websites for a living they, you know professionals they're wanting these like design applications. I mean, that's what I wanted. I, I used to build in Photoshop and then, you know, code my mockups or someone else's mockups or whatever, but it went from Photoshop or it went from a design application to the web. And then once I started using a page builder, we started using Beaver Builder. I did the majority of my design work in the browser. Um, <clears throat> and I think you're seeing a lot of that where a lot of people are treating these as design applications. So on, on that level, you know, their page builders as they are today are like professional tools and not to say that Gutenberg's not going to be good by saying it's not going to be a pro well, tool. It's a, it's a very reasonable argument um, because obviously the editor, the editor needed updating, you know, for, right. for when it came out, it was one of the best solutions around because most of them didn't work at all. At least it did work most of the time, but um, its abilities are so limited for the really very basic requirements that client want more more flexibility when it comes to images, grids, columns, you know, really basic layout yeah. stuff. It just couldn't do it, could it? No, yeah. I mean, the editor definitely has tons of room to be improved and, 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 and I think, you know, that they're going to improve on it and I think they're going to build in more layout editing capabilities and it's going to look a lot like a page builder. Um, but how far that gets taken to where, you know, like a lot of things in WordPress, you know, you use what's available to you in WordPress. And then when you need more, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll either build your own solution or go find, find a little plugin or a theme or whatever. And I think that'll still be the case. Now, Let's say there's a world where Gutenberg really does nail the page building thing, and then that 
that all of a sudden that starts to be a little bit of a problem for Beaver Builder. Um, like I said, we're building professional tools and we've been doing this for almost four years. So we could also take a look at what we've done in Beaver Builder and start to build solutions into the Gutenberg experience that are more on a pro level that don't come with, with core. Um, so I think there's room to use our expertise um, in that world. I also think that the two could live side by side just as tiny MCE and Beaver Builder live now. Um, I don't, I don't think there's a problem. I think that, that'll probably be the case for for some time to come all right then thanks justin we're going to wrap it up now folks for the podcast part of the show we're going to continue the discussion for another 10 15 minutes which you'll be able to see on the wp tonic website with a full set of uh, um, show notes and a full transcription of the interview um thank you justin for coming on the show so much how can people get to know more about beaver beaver builder and what you are up to specifically um we're on twitter and facebook um pretty easy to search for them we got our our facebook group's amazing and then um our blog it is we, <laughs> yeah. um and then yeah our blog that's where we post um you know we usually try to do a monthly uh, blog post just to say what we've been up to and not just us, things are going around the community, so it's, it's a good one to keep an eye on. Oh, that's great, Justin. And to get to uh, me, it's quite easy, folks. Go, um, You can email me at jonathan at wp-tonic with any suggestions of people you would like us to interview, topics you would like us to cover. Do remember our Friday shows, um, our roundtable shows. They're always a blast. We've got one coming up this Friday. Um, we've got a fantastic special guest um, and we'll be talking about multi-site, um, the beast, which it is. Uh, <laughs> um, um, that's at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can go to the WP Tonic and join us and put live questions to us, or you can watch it on the WP Tonic Facebook page live as well, just as the same as this discussion as well. Um, also, if you feel generous... Um, give us a review on iTunes. It does really help the show. I'm still trying to work out the update of the podcast app on my iPhone. They've absolutely changed everything. It's most pu pu puzzling, even for me. Uh, um, so good, lu good luck to our listeners. Uh, um, but that's the world of web development and app development, isn't it, folks? We'll be back next week with another interview with a WordPress developer, business owner, or just a WordPress junkie in general. See you next week, folks. Bye. Right, on to the um the the bonus content. So at least this um let's talk a little bit more about the business side of things. Um because you sure. you just come back from sunny Mexico, haven't you? Um, yeah. uh, um so um Chris Lemmer's um annual event uh um what was the general feeling in the wordpress um business owners that were attending were they optimistic about 2018 or what was the general impression you got um about the general feel of people in the wordpress community yeah um i definitely there wasn't the, yeah there was optimism for sure everyone's really excited about you know moving their businesses forward so there was definitely no red flags on all those business minds got together that anything bad was happening. Everyone's definitely um, sharing experiences and looking at new ways to grow their business. So sounds like, sounds like a lot of optimism for 2018. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically you're in a very intense sector. You got three leading competitors that you're, um, friendly competition. Um, right. <laughs> um, I don't think you want to kill them, uh, um, no. but they are competitors. You got three. Uh, have you been surprised at the intensity of um, uh, one of our roundtable um, panelists, um, Adam from WP Crafter? We were talking uh, about page builders last Friday. We did invite you, but unfortunately, you couldn't join us. But um, because you had, had so much coding to do, uh, um, um, and a family life that you must. Oh, I was no, that was, I was I was flying back from sunny yeah, Mexico. You were, <laughs> you were flying back from sunny Mexico as well. Um, 
he was remarking that you know he thought the page building market i think he was talking it's a 20 to 30 million dollar market at the present moment um in total i don't know exactly where he got those figures but i think he was making an educated guess have you been yeah i was was gonna say i haven't (laughs) seen any kind of market cap on the page builder space i don't know exactly (laughs) where you got that from but have you been surprised at the level of competition really um yeah uh, yes and no i mean obviously the page builder market is a big market i think that's what maybe surprised me um more than anything is that just how rabid people are about page builders, but it makes sense too, because if you look at them in terms of like the overall project, um, if for forms, for example, when I'm, if I'm using like a form builder, um, like gravity forms or ninja forms or something, you know, I will use that in part of my project, you know, depending on the project, you might have a bigger project that it gets more involved. Whereas a page builder, um, the type of, experience that you're having what it's actually doing for you using a lot more of your project or more maybe the entire project to build an entire website so i guess it makes sense why why it's grown so much and why people are so vocal about them is because they're using them so much in their projects yeah well yeah it's obvious and also you got you got the thing that you pointed out in the podcast part of the show that the that a lot of these tools are used by professional designers developers themselves that it's a it's a it's a main part they invest a lot of time on third party extensions educating becoming true power users they become very vocal about and it's very important to them isn't it which you see in your facebook uh, um, group don't you yeah yeah i, I think too though it, people tend to forget that you know, they're, they're the, just like, you know, the different parts of the, the internet, like that, like if you're like in a Reddit forum or, or whatever, and you're being vocal there and here and there and all that kind of stuff. And, and every, you know, there's, everyone's got their opinions and, oh, you should be using this page builder and you should be using that page builder. There are plenty of happy customers that, that, that find their solution. And they're like, I don't really care. I'm happy with this. This is working great for me. It's what I like to use. I don't need to go out and, um, you know, try every new little thing that comes out every day. I'm, you know, focusing on building my client websites and, and you don't see those people saying that kind of thing in there. Cause those, you know, those, are, those are the ones that are a little less vocal. So um, I, I think what you see versus like the overall big picture is a lot, is a lot different than, you know, the kind of competition. I think, I think it's a little less competitive than, 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 you know, the groups make it look like is I guess what I'm saying, you know, um, I mean, obviously it's competitive, but um, it's a, a big space too. There's um, there's a lot of pie for for everybody. <laughs> well, it's a bit like the WordPress maintenance. You know, WP Tonic is the company that I run, and I use the podcast to build um, uh, credibility for WP Tonic to show that I'm a, uh, that I'm active. I'm interested in WordPress because we have WordPress. It's a highly competitive sector, though. There's a lot sure. of players in it. I just don't worry. I, I worry about my own business and my own standards. And I, obviously, I keep my eye on the competition because I want to be. I want to keep competitive. Um, right. But I don't worry every night about the competition. A, I can't do anything about it. And B, if the present competitors weren't there, there'd be just another one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's just the reality of the marketplace. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I feel you there. I mean, I I I used to worry, and and then you know, like a couple things happened, and business, you know, the business didn't shut down. Everything kept going great, and uh, you know, yeah. I mean, you can't worry because you can't control it. And a bit, and what you can control is how you run your business and and how you you conduct yourself, like you're doing the podcast. And you know, we do a lot of marketing, which helps out great. And and you know, th- things are still going going in the right direction. Um, so, you know, I've, it, it took a little bit of time for me personally, cause you know, it's easy when you have competitors and then you start to have multiple competitors to start to worry that it's going to be all doom and gloom. Um, but then once you start to just, you know, keep working and, and keep focusing well, on your business. I think, I think we are all in the same boat, you know, worry is easy. Focus is hard, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's just a part of the human condition, isn't it? Worry is easy, focus is difficult um, to get in yep. <laughs> real focus. Um, just one last question, really, before we wrap it up. So, sure. um, do you actually think the, um, the, the general growth of WordPress, you know, do you think next year we will see even more growth, more market share being taken up by WordPress in general? Yeah. I mean, just from what we're seeing, I, 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 I don't really have any data to back no, this up just, on or just go, No. Yeah, but ge- my general feeling from what I'm seeing um, in the different online communities is that there's still a huge influx of people coming into WordPress. I mean, I think I feel like it's more than ever, um, but maybe that's just because we have a bigger user base now. But you know, when we first started out, it was a lot of like seasoned professionals that we are seeing. But now every day, I'm seeing more and more people that are saying, "I'm new to Beaver Builder and WordPress." Um, you know, and, and so it does seem just, again, you know, based on my own kind of what I've been seeing in the different communities, it does seem like we're still having a big kind of influx of, of new, new users, um, at least on the, the kind of, you know, web pro, um, power user side. So, so, I mean, from, from that, yeah, I mean, I think, I think we might, we might still see some more growth before Wix and Squarespace take us down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, I love that. I love those uh, Wix adverts. They are um, yeah. my YouTube channel. Some of they they are tracking me big ways, Justin. Uh, but oh, saw- it's funny. I've seen a couple Beaver Builder tutorials that you know people do, and I'll go watch them. But I have to watch a Wix uh, ad first. And what's, what's the name <laughs> of that model? They've got Kylie something, isn't it? Uh, uh, bless a little heart. Uh, she's a nice <laughs> young lady, but I am getting a little bit bored in seeing her web. Uh, um, her website that she built in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, we're good. Um, Justin, thank you so much for coming back on the WP Tonic. It's been a pleasure again. I just want to say, folks, that the Beaver Builder team are some of the nicest people that you could meet at WordCamps. Um, Justin's extremely approachable. Um, saw him at Sacramento. It seems ages ago. Time is flying, isn't it? Um, he yeah. did a great presentation. And just the Beaver Builder team in general are just some of the nicest people in WordPress that I've met in a long while. And I think it's just a great product as well. And um, I don't get any sponsorship for Beaver Builder at all for me to say that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just coming from my heart, folks. Um, so do look at their product. Um, they're a great team. And I, I, I wish you well, Justin, and your other founders. You, you, you're doing great stuff. Thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me. It was fun. Right, we're ending it now, folks, and see you next week, folks. Bye.